the name of the book How to Win Friends and Influence People by Dale Carnegie. We get it. You're a happy person. People like happy people. People don't like grumpy people. I know a grumpy person or two. And after a while, I like, dang, why are you always so grumpy? It's really just the way I am. It's just how it is. All right, all right. Do it over there. All right, here it comes. Um, number one, become genuinely interested in other people. The idea with the interesting, uh, interested thing is, if you are interested in other people, you want to get to know, like, hey, why does that girl wear that, that tiger backpack? Or, hey, that dude, he seems kind of happy. Or, um, the people out there playing people are like, why are you guys even doing that? Or, like, how do you know all that stuff about the movies? You know, you're generally interested in other people. That's step one, to have people like you. Just the fact that you want to know either about or other oh, people. Okay. All right. Um, number two. This is an obvious one. Go ahead and smile. Grumpy people don't smile. Um, and that's kind of an easy one, but I guess if you're in a room, you're like, oh, like, I guess someone doesn't want to come over to the room. Like, they're like, hey. and they'll, they'll even say to you later on when they meet you, now, you know what? You used to be, seem like you were mean or whatever. So I, I thought, no, 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 not even that way. Number three, remember that a person's name, uh, we'll circle name, is to that person the sweetest and most important um, word in any language. This goes to the idea of uh, Madeline versus a Madeline, having a Madeline versus Madeline. Someone said Mr. Hins. Um, of course, whenever someone says Mr. Hins, I will say close, it's actually Hines, like behind. You know, I don't make a big fuss out of it, but the point is I know I like my name the way it is. Uh, when I was a kid, um, I'm from Honduras, and so Enrique, it's a, it's a simple um, name, but uh, my neighbor, she's from America, she couldn't say Enrique. She would say Enrique. Now, I don't know how you can't say Enrique, Enrique. Thomas, are you going this weekend or next weekend? Uh, the 20th to the 23rd. Um, so she's like a wrecker. It. And after a while, we just let Sandra, look, Sandra, cool. I know you mean well, and maybe there's something wrong with your brain. So that's cool. We'll take it. Uh, but again, names. The other thing I'm going to offer with names is this. And I do it I think because of this. Whenever I go to a place where people have their um, their name tag on, in and out burgers, wherever I'm going, I try to use their name. I'll try and glance down without them looking, but even if they look, fine. Here's what I want you to experiment with for the next week. Anytime you go to a place where there's a tag, use their name. For example, for me, when I go to in and out I will say, uh, they're like, Alex, may I take your order, please? I go, uh, yeah, Alex, I'm going to get a hamburger, animal style, um, extra tomato, add ketchup in addition to the spread, chopped chilies, but light. That's my uh, in and out order that I always do. Uh, and then, boom, they go with it. So when you go somewhere, always check the name. And then when he says, all right, well, that'd be all. Yeah, thanks, Alex. Like you're friends or something. Uh, every now and again, I even introduce myself. But I'm not asking you to introduce yourself. I'm just saying, use the name. There's something special in doing that. That's number three. Let's see if we can get down to four and five. Number four, number four. Be a good listener. Woo oh, this one's going to be so good. If you only did one, you only did this one. You will be head and shoulders above other people. People will want to be your friend without even having to do stuff. Put 30 seconds under here. If you have 30 seconds, you get to be a good listener. Let me explain to you how it goes. Oh, she said you're going to get the email either today and the, like late night or tomorrow. All right, I'll look for it. It's for MGM stuff, too. Done and done. 30 seconds is all you need for number four. How does it work? You're talking to somebody. They want to say something about their weekend. They want to say what they did last night. They want to say something else. Your job is simply to count 30 seconds. In other words, and so what did you do last night? Oh, man, my mom, whatever, whatever. Normally you go like, yeah, me too, we were, whatever, in 10 seconds. Like you're jumping in somewhere around 7 to 10 seconds. Here I'm going to count 15 seconds just so you can feel how long 30 seconds might be. Hey, so what did you do last night? Oh, I was watching, whatever. This is you. You're not talking. I know. They're saying a lot. 15 seconds. They get another one of those to get up to 30. The rule will simply be, if they're still talking at 30, you get to jump in. And whatever they were saying, it doesn't matter anymore. It's your turn. So they're like, yeah, you were like, yeah, me and my mom. Well, whatever. Me and my dad were, you know, whatever you're going to say. 30 seconds makes you a good listener as a beginner. Eventually, there's another type of listening called reflective listening that you do when someone gives you a phone number. Hey, my number is 909-586-0978. Uh, you say, okay, hold on. Your number is 909-586-0978, right? Uh, that's called reflective listening, where you just double check 
with the person who's saying, like, yeah, man, my mom was whatever. I said, I was so mad. Like, whoa, whoa. So your mom did what to you? She did this, that, and the other. Like, yeah, yeah, yeah. Reflective listening is just when you repeat back to them what they said to make sure you understood it right. Your mom did what? No, it wasn't my mom. It was my grandmother. Dude, listen. Yeah. So your reflective listening, you're just checking on it. 30 seconds. That's all it takes. Usually by 15, they'll be done. So you usually won't go the full 30. Number five, talk in terms of other people's interests. This whole list is going to be basically saying, if you want people to like you, don't make it about you. Make it about them. Eventually, if they're good people, they'll try and make it about you. But if they never try to make it about you, maybe, maybe, maybe you don't want to be friends with them. Maybe you just know them, and that's cool. But you're not trying to be tight with them, because if it's always about them, that thing is off balance. Last one, last one. Make the other person feel important, circle feel important, and do it sincerely. If you're just faking, then it doesn't even matter. You're the problem. But if you do it sincerely, uh, last night me and my mom were doing well. Like, oh, dang, that sounded like that was fun. That alone is making it um, seem important. Yeah, so I went and I did a magic show for the kids who um, either had cancer, their parents had cancer, or a sibling had cancer. The only way you got to come to this party is somebody had to have cancer um, re related to that kid. So we were there because, of course, my wife had cancer, but she's okay now. But her kids, of course, got to be there because of that. Well, we did like a, a bunch of magic tricks for them. How do you make me feel like one? Like, dang, that's a good thing that you did. That's it. So when you're making someone feel important, it doesn't have to be like over the top. You're just affirming them, confirming them, and that kind of thing. So that's number six. Uh, we're going to the uh, number eight. Number eight. Uh, I don't see, see, see things from uh, the other person's point of view. It works like this. Uh, and example, my wife, you know, you have to take out the trash every week. You take it from your house, put it into the little big things. You push them out. Um, they pick them up. Well, here's what I think. This week, I may not take out the big thing because the trash out there is only half full. I'm always like, oh, you gotta take it out, you gotta take it out. I'm like, why? I mean, you can just leave it there. It, when it fills up next week, I'll take it out next week. I know it must go out. Like, what is that? They're like, it's gonna stink. No, no, it's trash. Trash stinks. That's what it does. It's a trash ass. So, in the end, if my amygdala wasn't going and I wasn't just trying to win the argument, I would have said to her, number eight. All right, hold on, hold on. Try to help me see from your eyes or from your vantage point, from your point of view, why taking out the trash each week is so important. I say that, and I start counting to 30. I don't see any more. She's saying her thing. Yeah, when I was a little girl, my grandmother put me in the trash can, and my dad wouldn't have discovered me if he wasn't taking out the trash that week. And so from then on, I have to take out the trash every single day. Now, the answer may be crazy, whatever they say. I'm only on 20 now. She's done. But at least you know, oh, that's why you're crazy. You know, you, at least you know it. You don't have to say that. But my point is, what if she said something that was actually like a good reason where you're like, oh, well, I didn't know you should have just said that. She's like, I was telling you, you just want to listen, whatever. The point is, this one here alone, if you learn nothing else in math class, this one here would make your life so much better. It will be hard to do because when you're arguing, your amygdala is in charge. It's emotional. And when it's emotional, it's about you, it's not about them. So it can be hard to stop and go like, okay, explain to me again why you think I'm an idiot. Let them say whatever they're going to say. And then if you really want to mess with them at the end of 30 seconds, just do this. Watch this. They say the whole thing, they wait for you to come back at them, you go, all right, thanks. Then either you walk away, or you just like, okay. Um, they're like, what do you think about it? Nah, I gotta think about it. Um, 